Hey everyone. Hello. Hi Chris. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Okay. Hi everyone. Welcome. Uh, I think we're going to just jump right in since we started a couple of minutes late. Uh, okay. Welcome to our webinar uh, with Zaka and Jobs for Lebanon. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, start by asking everyone to um, send any questions you might have in the chat so that we can make sure to tackle them uh, during the last 10 minutes of our call today. The call is, you know, the, the session is going to last, it's an informative one uh, that's going to last about 30 minutes. And um, today we're going to be focusing on informing really companies um, on how to access uh, AI talent, artificial intelligence. Uh, with Christophe, we are going to do a deep dive into getting a better idea of what AI is and also um, understanding a bit more what the different industries um, yeah, getting an idea of, of the different industries that could benefit from artificial intelli intelligence. And of course, we'll be focusing on um, the advantages uh, that employers get from hiring specifically the candidates that uh, have gone through this program. So let's begin, Christophe, we'll start with you. We'll start with an intro. Uh, please introduce yourself. Tell us uh, a bit about Zaka, what it is, why you started it, and then we can, uh, we can start from there. Perfect. Thank you, Neil. Um, so basically, um, my background is in software engineering. I've uh, been working in the tech sector for more than 12 years, and I've been focusing on AI and machine learning for the last uh, eight years. Um, initially, I was working in the field as an AI engineer. I was working on different projects and uh, you know, with, with different companies. But I've noticed that uh, looking at the, at the region here, you can see the... Uh, uh, the mismatch or kind of the, uh, the lack of adoption when it comes to artificial intelligence. And so there weren't a lot of um, activities and a lot of companies that are working with AI. Um, and I wanted to change that. So I um, initially founded a community called Beirut AI to uh, kind of promote artificial intelligence in Lebanon and to get more people aware and implementing artificial intelligence. And we organized different uh, meetups, workshops, uh, you know, different types of events. And it was throughout the community work that I realized um, that people don't really understand what AI is. And this is why you, can, you don't see a lot of adoption. You don't see uh, companies working or implementing AI. And also you don't see qualified talent in the field. And so the idea of Zaka came through those community work. And so uh, um, I also had, uh, my co-founders were also part of Beirut AI community. And together we decided that this mission is really important and we should dedicate our full-time effort on, on pushing that. And so this is how Zaka was born. Uh, and so in a nutshell, Zaka is an AI education company that's focusing on pushing AI in the region through education and consultancy. And the main focus is on education. So we provide different programs to help individuals uh, get the, the technical skills and the practical skills needed to work in AI. And we also help companies uh, understand how to implement AI in their businesses. This is in a nutshell. Awesome. Thank you, Christophe. That's a great intro. I always love to hear about how ideas are generated. And it's always interesting to see how they always come from, uh, I want to say, a, a problem that's detected, because um, that's always when, when they're the most productive, the ideas that come about. Tell us then, what is AI all about? Because I'm sure there's a lot of misconceptions around. Uh, tell us about the different industries that use it. Uh, what does it look like for companies that want to benefit, or that are benefiting from um, AI nowadays and would like to um, in the future, in the near future? Yeah, I feel this is very important because uh, AI is a, is a big term. It's an umbrella term that has a lot of different meanings. And so Whenever we're talking about AI, I always make sure to start by defining what I mean when I say AI. And so everyone here should align on the definition of AI, right? People, when they hear the words artificial intelligence, most of them think of robotics. That's the first thing that comes to their mind, like a robot, um, a humanoid that looks like humans. Sometimes they're, they're evil, something, whatever. And this is not an accurate description, right? AI is not just robotics. 
AI can mean deep learning, it can mean machine learning, it can mean data science, it can mean a lot of different things. And the majority of those that I just mentioned are not hardware, they're actually software, they're algorithms. And so um, when we say AI, we're mostly talking about these smart algorithms that allow uh, machines to perform tasks that are kind of reserved for humans or for intelligent uh, beings. And so um, I'll give an example. Uh, anyone who uh, works with uh, coding, who's a programmer or coding, knows that we can practically um, write a software, write an algorithm that tells a computer how to perform a certain task by following step-by-step -step instructions. So do this and then do that and then execute this, whatever. So of course it can be a bit complicated, but this approach is limited in what it can do because there are tasks that are not easily uh, kind of reproduced in step-by-step -step instructions, right? For example, how can I tell a program uh, to look at an image and identify if this is a cat or a dog in the image, right? How can I do it? It's not very clear because there is no um, like one way that cats uh, look like, right? You have different, uh, different shapes, different colors, different uh, textures, different shapes. So cats come in different forms, right? So this is one simple example. And there's a lot of other examples like this. And so whenever we have this kind of um, task that cannot be produced uh, by a simple algorithm, we go with what we call AI, which are machine learning algorithms. And the way, the simple way to understand how they work is by looking at data. So instead of me trying to tell the computer how to look at, a, uh, at an image of a cat and ident identify a cat, instead I can just show the algorithm hundreds and millions of images of cats, and I can tell it, this is what a cat looks like, right? This is a cat, this is a dog. And you figure out what the pattern is. You figure out what you need to look for to identify a cat or a dog or whatever. And this is just one example, which is image classification. But the same thing applies to other tasks, right? And so uh, we call them smart algorithms because they do not take instructions as input, uh, as typical algorithms, they take uh, data as input. So they look at data, they find a pattern in that data, and they use this pattern to uh, either make a prediction or to perform a task or uh, do something else. And that's why uh, AI has been called software 2.0, right? So it's the next version of programming. And so I'd like to go back to your second question, which is what are the industries that can benefit from AI and what, which type of companies can use AI? So yeah. uh, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, it's not specific to, to a specific industry or specific type of companies, right? Any company, any sector can and is currently uh, using AI, uh, you know, for different applications. And so you can think of AI just like coding, right? So just like you can build a website to do anything or you can build uh, different softwares, right? The same thing applies on AI. And we see it applied on different sectors like uh, banking, finance, agriculture, uh, education, healthcare, whatever. It's not just a technology-based application. And so any company that has data that is somehow collecting data and wants to uh, make decisions based on this data or wants to leverage this data for uh, to improve the product or to improve its efficiency can use AI um, internally, right? So um, I'm, I'm not giving examples because it's really a broad uh, uh, spectrum, right? So it's not really specified to uh, a small use case. Yeah, but how about giving a concrete example of, uh, you can either go with, let's say, an example of what type of company could use image classification, or you could give us an example of an industry that is very unlikely that we think uh, would potentially benefit from AI. Um, yeah, okay, sure, I can, I can give examples. So for example, um, let's say you have a, a, a platform like a, a social network or some kind of platform where users are posting content, right? User can post messages or share images or something. And of course, you'd like, let's say, this platform to be uh, free of any, uh, let's say, pornography or any malicious content or anything that you don't want to, to show. So instead of having a person look at every single post that is posted or any, every single image, you can build an AI model that looks at every image uploaded and identifies, is this an image, uh, let's say, a safe image or one of those not safe for work images, for example. So this is an easy way to implement this feature. It's literally one feature, it's one, uh, it's not a, uh, we're not reinventing the wheel, but this is AI, right? This is a machine learning model 
that looks at images and classifies them safe, not safe, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You mentioned agriculture. I'm curious to hear a bit more about how agriculture could use uh, artificial intelligence, just, just briefly. I'm yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of applications. So I'm going to give quickly two applications, right? One of them involves robotics. So I've seen a lot of companies that build robots, and these robots, um, they do a, a range of things, right? So uh, one of them is called precision agriculture, where um, let's say right now the farmer uh, sprays uh, pesticide uh, you know, across the whole crop. So they just spray equally, right? But in mm -hmm. fact, every plant might need different uh, amount or different uh, things based on specifically what's happening in that plant. And so precision agriculture is having, let's say a robot that can go over the crops, identify using computer vision, each specific plant, and then looking at the plant and checking, for example, uh, some parameters that can decide, okay, this plant needs that amount of water, that amount of herbicide, that amount of whatever, and giving it exactly what it needs and giving a customized solution or customized uh, behavior, let's say for every plant. And this is one example. Another example that AI is used in agriculture is through sensors. Uh, you can install what we call IoT sensors, Internet of Things, that detect the temperature, humidity, uh, Again, lots of other things, which I'm not really an expert in agriculture, but what you can do is you can use the data to predict, for example, um, when you might need to uh, um, water the plants, the crops, when you might need to, uh, I don't know, like using historical data to predict future behaviors, which allows farmers to you know, save on, on products, on, on time, in, you know, lots, of, uh, lots of things. Yeah. I bet you can talk about this forever and a lot of follow up questions are coming to my mind, but for the sake of time, we're going to let's dive into this collaboration actually and discuss uh, specifically what jobs for Lebanon and Zeka are doing together um, and how and, and you know what the candidates of this program are doing and how they can uh, how they're going to be, you know, uh, beneficial to employers who are who might be looking to hire them. Um, so yeah we've we've entered in this into this collaboration together. Um, this past year. And the idea of Jobs for Lebanon and Zaka, as you know, Jobs for Lebanon is a nonprofit um, that is looking to become the go-to platform for every Lebanese talent looking for economic opportunities. So we work on cultivating, cultivating an ecosystem, on sourcing opportunities, and on empowering talent. And it's that specific pillar, empowering talent, that we are collaborating on aims um, at putting, I think, at 33 applicants um, through the job placement. So we're offering job placement support um, from the machine learning certification program that you run, right? Um, yeah, so do, do you want to give a bit more details about what, uh, what employers can hope to get out of these candidates, a bit about the benefits, what they can expect, what not to expect? Definitely, yes. Um, so, as Neil was um, mentioning, uh, one of our programs is called the Machine Learning Certification, and this is uh, our kind of uh, flagship program at the moment. And the point of that program is to prepare talent for the job market. And so it's to graduate what we call market ready uh, AI engineers or ML engineers. And so during that program, it's a 16 week uh, intensive training where we take people who have zero knowledge in AI, but of course they need to know programming and the basics of math. And we teach them everything they need to, to, to know from a market perspective. So we focus on the practical skills, we focus on the, uh, the frameworks and the tools that they use, and we cover uh, many aspects, which I'm not gonna go into right now because we don't have time, but you can take it from the foundations all the way to uh, deploying in production, right? So how do you take your model and deploy it and scale it and whatever? And this is on the technical side. In addition, we also have a soft skills track because we really care that those graduates are not just technically uh, strong or capable, but also have the soft skills required for the job market. And so we help them um, build their CVs, their profiles, uh, communication. We help them with mock interviews and we really make sure that they're ready for the job market. And so for, from a company's perspective, uh, we all know that AI talent, there's a global shortage of AI talent and let alone in the MENA region as well. And so uh, what you will get from our graduates are people who, um, might be juniors when it comes to AI, but they've, they've had practical experience for the last 16 weeks building things. So uh, it's not like they've never built anything. They have, uh, every week they have to build a small project and to graduate, they have a capstone project 
which is a three to four weeks focused on building a project. And so this practical experience gets them, uh, um, you know, to having the practical skills so they can start implementing projects when you, when you hire them. They will not, they're not seniors, obviously. So you don't hire them to lead a team, but you hire them to execute and to start building ML projects internally, uh, you know, within your company. Awesome. Thanks for that. So we are, we have uh, 12 minutes left on the clock. Um, I'll take advantage of the time to ask a little bit more. I, well, actually, let me add a bit more on, on what they what they kind of go through with Jobs for Lebanon. So obviously, Zaka is handling the technical side, the technical skills training. And then with Jobs for Lebanon um, and the, the talent empowerment, the candidate empowerment bit, we also uh, assist them through the entire, I would say, job process and so and jobs for lebanon's role of course and all of this is also sourcing the opportunities for for these talents um and so they do go through soft skills training as well um so that they can prep themselves for the interviews um and they do a bit of uh, communications trainings you know just 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 like being really career ready um so that's kind of what they get out of all of this i see that a question came up in the chat let me just pull that up. Yeah, I think I answered uh, the regarding the requirements. Uh, to, yes. To, oh, background of programming this knowledge and maths. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. But I also want to add one thing, Neil, uh, regarding yeah. the, the capstone project. So that I've mentioned uh, towards the end of the program, the last four weeks are focused on building a capstone project. And the cool thing about those projects is that most of the time they're sourced from our partner of companies, a partner network of companies. So we do work with companies who propose capstone projects for the students, which gives them a real real world experience, uh, working on real data and actual problems. And this helps them kind of do like an internship, uh, you know, with the company building actual solutions. And it helps also the companies um, assess the quality of the candidates and hopefully hire them uh, after graduation if they're interested in hiring. Yeah, and, and that's really interesting that you're mentioning that because when we do look at the hiring challenges that um, employers could be faced with, that's definitely something, right? Specifically with uh, roles that that are more technical than others, that um, hands-on experience that they get through the program definitely gives them an, an advantage over over other candidates, right? Exactly. I mean, we've heard this from many companies uh, that whenever they hired someone, let's say, graduated from university and who have covered AI, they have strong background in the theory, but when it comes to applying, it takes them a long time, like which tools to use and framework, and they, they feel like stuck Whereas our graduates can just, you know, start running uh, immediately after, you know, start, start mm. working. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Deb, since we have a bit more time and I don't see that uh, any other questions are coming in and we will, we will just, you know, look at them if they do. Can you do a little bit of a deeper dive into maybe... Um, you know, we did talk about the industries that that you know, or the companies, the types of companies that can benefit from these candidates. What what industries aren't likely? We can't. We don't. Yeah, I know we discussed agriculture, but um, I guess my question is, how do you kind of educate companies on the benefits of? Uh, of implementing AI in their in their companies, and I know that it makes sense to say you know automation improves productivity, uh, but but how do you how, what what's the effort that's done to educate let's say through your community? Um, so um, so we host regularly uh, webinars uh, within the community to kind of raise awareness and promote AI. Uh, most of the those uh, webinars are kind of targeted towards uh, individuals, not companies, but mm -hmm. luckily. AI is a, is a trendy word and it's a hot topic. And most companies always think like, okay, what can I do with AI within the company? So we do get a lot of those requests, companies reaching out and saying, I'm into X, whatever, and I would like to use AI, what can I do? And for those companies, we do have, let's say a, a call with them to kind of understand what's their business, what do they do? Uh, what, you know, what do they look for in, in their product roadmap? So what kind of features they would like to introduce. And because it's important to know that AI is not a solution. AI, it's a tool, right? People mm -hmm. think that I want to add AI to my, prob to, to my uh, product, but I, they don't know how. Sometimes they just want, they have a problem, not even a product. They have a problem and they say, okay, I'll use AI to fix that problem. But it's not the case. AI is not a solution. It's a tool that you have to understand how to use to solve your problem or to improve your product. And so this is 
what we help them with, identifying the, the where in their product or in their business can AI be leveraged and helping them put a, a roadmap of steps of what to do um, to, to approach that. And just to add one thing, most of the time, it always starts with data. And so if they're not even thinking about data, I always tell them, start implementing a data strategy, start thinking of how and where and you know what you need to do to collect data, to store data, because without this, you have no AI, right? It's all about, it's all based on data. And so yeah. you need to have this to even think about the algorithms. Yeah, I think you with, your, with what you just said, you answered the last question we received, but I'm gonna ask it anyway to see if you wanna add anything. Uh, what does Zaka offer other than education related to AI? To AI, does it offer solutions for for companies, or I guess you meant tools for companies? Yeah, we don't have solutions or products to sell to companies. We only do education and consultancy. So we help we build talent and we we help companies implement or figure out how to implement AI in their businesses. Hmm. Um, and I think we have a question uh, from yeah. Anas regarding the NLP yeah. track. Um, and so we do have, uh, it's not a track, but uh, we have two weeks of this program focused on what we call advanced data types. So we do cover how to apply deep learning on images, which is computer vision, how to apply it on text, which is uh, NLP. And so it is covered, but it's not a whole track. Awesome. Okay, someone also asked something. Can I have a briefing about consultancy services? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you'd like, just reach out. I'll send you my email in the chat and we can discuss that uh, in more detail. But again, as I said, roughly, we, we understand your, your business, your product, and where you want to go with that. And we see where can AI be uh, plugged in, let's say, and what, what you can do with this technology. And this is my email in the chat. Thank, Thank you. you Awesome, we have five minutes left. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or is there anything else that would like to be um, discussed? Maybe talk about the duration of the program, Christoph. We didn't get into um, yeah, this program and how long it lasts. I know we talked about a capstone project, but maybe walk us through a bit of the program because it was interesting when you discussed the things that they touch on um, yeah, just now. Definitely. So uh, the whole duration is 16 weeks. Uh, we start with uh, the foundations. So the first week is data science foundation, and then machine learning foundations, and then we go to deeper of how to build and evaluate models. Then we have a, a break week where they get to catch up on content and also have some soft skill sessions. And then we dive into machine learning, um, uh, deep learning, and neural networks. We dive into advanced uh, data types, like I said, computer vision, natural language processing, time series analysis, um, recommender systems, and then we have. Two, these are two weeks, by the way, and then two weeks focused on machine learning and production, which is very important because this is where actually they kind of go out of the, the lab environment and start working in real environments. So deployment, monitoring, uh, tools, integration, all of those things. Then we also have a, another break week. And then week 12 is the research and hot topics week where we bring in speakers working on cutting edge because AI is a field that's growing and that's being uh, you know, new, new, every, every day we have new things coming up. And so we really, it's important to teach the participants how they can keep up with the advancement in the field. And this is why this research week is important because we bring in experts, people who are working in that field to share their experience, to share what they're working on. Then we have three weeks of capstone projects, uh, which is also work with companies. And finally, we have the career fair where we kind of connect the companies with the graduates and uh, they get to pitch their presentation, their project, sorry, and uh, engage with the recruiters. And then this recent step as well, of course, with Jobs for Lebanon, uh, we, we take on the candidates, put them through an onboarding session with Jobs for Lebanon, where they get their profiles on our platform. And then this is where Jobs for Lebanon does the effort in you know, sourcing the, the, the opportunities for these candidates to start applying through and we support them throughout. We have a few more questions that came in, one from Ali asking, do you have an internship program? Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have an internship program at the moment. Yeah, and then Anas asking, I hope I said your name right, can I get references of Zaka graduates for my company or leave my company contact for graduates who are interested in applying? Definitely. Um, you can, you know what, what we can do is, uh, we can share our email and the, if you can, yeah, we can, you can share your email with us and then we'll definitely reach out to you. 
um, you know, we'll collaborate together to reach out to you on that. And then Carla is asking, can we know more about the steps, application, investment stages mm -hmm. after the training, et cetera? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question, Carla. A bit, uh, the steps to join the program, you mean? Or uh, yes. yeah, so um, so the program we have two steps in the application process. First of all, you you apply, you fill the form, we reach out, we have a small uh, like an interview with you to understand your your goals and uh, if this is the right program for you. And then um, after that, you have a technical assessment which we send. It's a small assessment to kind of understand your level of. Uh, programming and your understanding of math. And then if you pass the assessment, uh, you're, uh, you're good to go, you can join the program. Um, after the, the training, uh, I mean, you can, uh, you'll be onboarded in, on the Jobs for Lebanon platform as well. And uh, you'll be connected to companies looking to hire, uh, you know, talent. Okay, exactly. And then, uh, oh, there you go. All right. Um, I saw a comment that said we'll be reaching out. I thought it was a question. This is our time, yeah. guys. Uh, it was really, really very informative. Thank you all for joining. Um, can you inform us about the tuitions? That last question. We'll take that last question. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, I mean, so the, the tuition of the program is uh, a, bit, a bit less than $3,000. But we do have um, a scholarship program that uh, you know for specific uh, profiles. So if you if you'd like, uh, just fill the form, and then when you have the interview, you can mention. Uh, uh, we'll see based on your profile if you would, if you're a good fit for the scholarship program uh, or not. So uh, just go to zaka.ai. You'll find the AI certification. There's a form on the website. You can apply there, and uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out. Also, we'll we'll support you. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you, everyone. We've taken your information. Um, and yeah, let me just screenshot this so I don't lose it. Uh, again, thank you for joining. This was very informative. Christoph, thank you for doing this call. Um, My pleasure. In this session, I can hear your baby in the background. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I know it's the time. Allah. But anyway, thank you, everyone, for joining. It really was a pleasure, very informative. This session has been recorded, so we will be posting it. Um, and please definitely every